Hello, mighty companion. This is Earl Purdy here on Facebook Live doing hardcore A Course in Miracles, A Course in Miracles. And our topic is going to be sickness and healing. Sickness and healing. How do you deal with sickness? What's the correct way of looking at sickness? How do you let it go from A Course in Miracles perspective, which is naturally a perspective that's very different from the way that we've been taught. So any form of lack of happiness any form of lack of peace is called sickness and of course in miracles. So it's not just talking about physical illness. It's talking about any time you're upset about anything that's causing you any kind of pain and suffering. So we're going to talk about sickness and talk about healing. It's very powerful. What We are going to allow ourselves to get tuned in. And we're going to tune in, give everybody a chance to come in, and we're going to talk about Sickness from a perspective that you may not have ever heard of before. Here we go. So take this opportunity to let the day go and teach only love. That is what you are. Only love. Yes, that is what you are. Teach only love. Love is what you are. That is what you are. Teach, teach only love. Everywhere you go, teach only love. To everyone you know, teach only love. Love is what you are. Hey, yeah. Let me recognize the problem, so the problem. Let me recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. Teach only love. Teach every day. Teach only love. In your own special way. Teach only love. This is Earl Purdy, and I want to welcome you to Hardcore Course in Miracles here on Facebook Live. We're going to be on Lesson 136 in, in the Course in Miracles workbook. We're going to be continuing with Lesson 136, which is Sickness is a Defense Against the Truth. Teach only love. Love is what you are. Teach <laughs> love. Yeah, you're a shining star. Only love. What you are. Yeah. Let me recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. Let me recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. Teach only love. And every day, teach only love. In each and every way, teach only love. No matter is what you are. So, welcome to Hardcore Course in Miracles. And I'm Earl Purdy, and we're going to talk about sickness and healing. We're going to be doing Lesson 136 in the Course in Miracles workbook. And if you have access to it and it's safe for you to do it, I would encourage you to have your Course in Miracles book because this is a class. It's not just a lecture. It's about supporting people who actually want to uh, study a Course in Miracles and apply the Course in Miracles to their life so that they can have the healings and the miracles and the happiness and the joy that the Course in Miracles is promising. And I promise you, you will not have the happiness and the joy the way the Course in Miracles promises if you're a Course in Miracles student and you're not actually using a Course in Miracles and applying what the Course in Miracles is saying. So we realize that the Course in Miracles always says things in ways that's very different from the way we've been taught. So that's why the Course in Miracles says if you're going to study the Course in Miracles, there are certain guidelines that you have to follow 
or else, you know, it won't be the most fun you've ever had in your life. And what's the guideline? Well, if you really want to get the most out of what I'm about to share with you, do you really want to get a lot out of what I'm about to share with you? Okay. If you want to get the most out of what I'm sharing and I'm going to share with you, you need to remember that you need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not believe the ideas. You need not welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist some of the ideas. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. I'm going to say some stuff that's hard to believe. I'm not going to talk in a traditional way. You're not going to, you, this is not going to be communicating with you the way that we've been taught. I'm not going to be sharing with you in terms of the way of what the world teaches. Okay. The Course in Miracles is the opposite of what the world teaches. Uh, some of the stuff then might startle you. I may say some things that startle you. I may say some things that you don't agree with. I may say some things that you don't believe is true. Uh, but you're not being asked to judge what I say from A Course in Miracles. You're not being asked to analyze what I'm saying from A Course in Miracles. If you use these ideas, then that will give the ideas meaning to you. If you use the ideas, it will give the ideas meaning to you. If you use the ideas, it will give the ideas meaning to you. Did I say if you use the ideas, it will give the ideas meaning to you and show you that the ideas are true. Okay, so I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad that you want to go deep with me. Thanks you. Thank you for showing up for the live presentation, even though you could watch the replay, and hopefully you will watch the replay at another time. But I do it live so that we can all be present at the same time. I say again, we're going to be on Lesson 136 in the Course in Miracles workbook in the Blue Book. We're going to be on page 258 in the workbook. And I'm going to do a quick review of Paragraph 7. Paragraph 7 on page 258 starts out with a very radical statement, and that radical statement is what? Sickness is a decision. S sickness is a decision. Sickness is a decision. I am a divine repetition teacher. I've been teaching and studying the Course for over 40 years. And the Course in Miracles constantly says, remember, don't forget. Remember, don't forget. And it constantly teaches that you should repeat what it's saying over and over and over again. So it's through the repetition, it's through remembering what you're being told and applying it to how you see things. That's how you get the miracles of healing that the Course in Miracles promises. Not through analyzing it, not, trying to, not through trying to compare it to the way that you already think and already believe. But if you are a person right now and you're dealing with any area of physical illness or emotional illness or mental illness in terms of being sad, unhappy, depressed, angry, uh, then you want to hear what the Course in Miracles is saying about that. And that's what we're covering. And I call it Hardcore Course in Miracles because it's especially, this presentation is especially geared toward people who are Course in Miracles students or who really want to be a a uh, dedicated Course in Miracles student, even though <clears throat> anybody can watch and you could benefit through it because it's not an accident. If you're watching this, it's not an accident. If you're watching this or you're listening to this, it's not an accident. The Course in Miracles teaches what? That there's no such thing as an accident, that there is nothing that happens by accident. So it's not an accident. If you're hearing me right now, it's not an accident. So the first thing it says in paragraph seven, and I teach in a question and answer format. So what is it that the Course in Miracles says about sickness? Well, the Course in Miracles says that sickness is a decision. Sickness is a decision. So if I have a headache, it's a decision. If I have a cold, it's a decision. Any type of sickness that a person has, whether they believe it or not, it's a decision. It's not something that is happening to you. It's not something that's happening to you that you didn't seek. Uh, it's not something that happens to you. Sickness is not something that just happens to you that makes you weak and brings you suffering. This is paragraph 7 on page 258 in the workbook of A Course in Miracles. Do you know that sickness isn't a decision? So that means that sickness is not something that happens to you. It's not something that happens to you quite unsought. 
that makes you weak and that brings you suffering. Do you know that sickness is a choice? Sickness is a choice. Health is a choice. Fear is a choice. Love is a choice. Sadness is a choice. Joy is a choice. Anger is a choice. Peace is a choice. Lack is a choice. Abundance is a, is a choice. So it's a choice. Sickness, you, uh, sickness is a choice that a person makes. It's a plan that a person lays. So when does a person get sick? When does a person choose pain? He says, when for an instant truth arises in your own deluded mind and all your world appears to totter and prepare to fall. So, so when you begin to practice the truth and you begin to recognize you are a spiritual being that's creating your own reality through your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and beliefs, when you start to believe that you're not a victim of the sickness, that you're not a victim of your unhappiness, then the part of you that believes you are a victim, the part of you that believes that you are a victim, that part of you becomes afraid and creates some type of physical illness or unhappiness so that you will believe you are a victim again. Because the ego is the part of the person that believes they are a victim. So when you begin to accept the truth and you begin to hear that you, your sickness or unhappiness is a decision, and it's not something that happened to you, then the part of you that doesn't believe that, <clears throat> it creates pain or suffering or sickness so that this truth can go away and establish and threaten your establishments no more. I'm going to say this again until you hear it. Sickness is a choice, is a decision. Unhappiness is a choice and a decision. Loneliness is a choice and a decision. It's a plan that you lay when the truth starts to have an effect on you and you begin to accept that you are indeed a creator, that you are not a victim, then the part of you that thinks you are a victim tries to create a situation that makes you think you're a victim. Whether you are a victim of sickness or lack or loneliness or whatever it is that's upsetting you, it is a choice that you make. It is a decision that you've made because your ego is trying to convince you that the truth that you're studying is not the truth. So how do you think that sickness can shield you from accepting the truth? Because if I'm sick, if I have a bad cold, if I have a sore throat, then it proves that I must be connected to this body, that I must not be separate from the body. Because I'm the one that says, I have a headache, I have a cold, I'm not feeling good today. I don't go, my body isn't feeling good today. People say they are not feeling good today because you are taught that you are a body. And the Course in Miracles is teaching you that you are not a body. You are spirit. So when you're sick and unhappy, it proves the body isn't separate from you. So you must be separate from the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is you are not a body. You are free. You are still as God created you. And God did not create you as a body. God did not create you as a body. You are more than a body. You are more than a body, but you think you are a body. You've been taught that you are a body. And, and in most cases, everybody around you thinks that they are bodies. But that is not what you are, according to the Course in Miracles. You are a spiritual being who has a body, and the purpose of your body is for you to join and communicate. So when you are sick, then... You don't believe your body is separate from you, so it looks like you are suffering pain. Why are you suffering pain? Because your body is suffering pain. I have, a, let's say you have a toothache. I'm suffering pain. I say that I'm suffering pain because my body is suffering pain. So in pain, I'm made one with my body. When I'm going through pain, it makes me think I'm joined and that I am just a body. So whenever you go through pain, then it makes you think you must be that body that's going through pain. And so your true identity that you think is your true identity as a body is preserved. And then it says, and the strange haunting thought that you might be something beyond this little pile of dust, the body is silenced and still. For see, this, this dust, this body 
can make you suffer. This body can twist your limbs. It looks like the body can stop your heart, commanding you to die and to cease to be. Don't analyze this. Don't analyze this. Don't analyze this. Let yourself hear it. Just let yourself hear it. Just let yourself hear it. Just let yourself hear this. The first stage, the Course says, to accepting the truth or another way of looking at things, what do you do? You let yourself hear the other way of looking at things, even if you don't believe it, even if you don't accept it, even if it brings up active resistance. I want you to hear what I'm telling you. You are a spiritual being. You are not a body. You are a spiritual being who has a body. Whenever you start to believe you might be more than a body, then the part of you that thinks you are a body decides that you should get sick because through that sickness and that illness, it makes you identify with your body, so it keeps you believing that you are a body. Sickness keeps you thinking that you are still just a body instead of an unlimited spiritual being. Any form of unhappiness, any form of pain and suffering is a way for you to identify with your bodily identity. So then it says in the next paragraph, which is paragraph um, nine, it says, thus is the body stronger than the truth. Because the truth that we are studying, what is the truth that we're studying doing? The truth that we're studying is asking you to live. Uh, it looks like what happens to our body is what happens to us. But the Course says that our mind is trying to prove to us, there's a part of your mind that's trying to prove to you that your body is who you are and whatever your body goes through, that's what you are going through. But the truth, which is what the Course in Miracles and any true spiritual teaching is teaching, is that it is asking you to live. So A Course in Miracles and any true spiritual teaching is asking you to live. It's asking you to realize that what you really are is eternal. What you really are is eternal. What you really are does not die. Who you really are does not die. Your real self does not die. The body dies. You do not. The body dies. You do not. You do not die. You are more than the body. But the truth might be asking you to live, but do you know that it can overcome your choice to die? So if you really just want to believe that you are just a human body that dies one day, then it will appear that you are a human body that dies one day. If you really want to believe you are just a limited being that lives a certain number of years and then you die one day, then nothing is going to try to prove to you that that is not true. So then it looks like the body is more powerful than everlasting life. Spirit is saying, you know what? You have everlasting life. But we think we are bodies, and so we believe we die. So it looks like the body is more powerful than you learning that you have everlasting life. Then it says, and follow along with me, those who have their book. Uh, we, are on page, we are on page 258 and paragraph 9. And it says, <clears throat> thus is the body stronger than the truth. And what does the truth ask you to do? It says, well, the truth asks you to live, but cannot overcome your choice to die. And so the body seems like it's more powerful than everlasting life. It looks like heaven, which is our reality, is more frail than hell, which is fear. And it looks like God's design for our healing is opposed by a decision stronger than God's will. See, God's design is that you let go of all the thoughts, feelings, emotions, and beliefs that keep you from remembering that you are an eternal spirit. And it's called forgiveness. God's design for forgiveness is correct perception. The Course in Miracles says forgiveness, when they ask you to forgive somebody, it's not asking you to overlook something that you think somebody did to you. The Course in Miracles says no, when you forgive, you're correctly perceiving and you're realizing that the way you feel right now is not being caused by what somebody else did to you. The way that you feel right now 
is being caused by the way you're looking at things. The way you feel right now is being caused by the way you look at things. So you have to learn how to look at things a brand new way. If you want to feel a brand new way, you have to see things a brand new way. So seeing things a brand new way is what the Course in Miracles defines as forgiveness. Forgiveness is true perception. Per forgiveness is correct perception. So when you're studying A Course in Miracles and you hear the word forgiveness, it is not, I repeat, The Course in Miracles is not defining forgiveness the way the world defines forgiveness. When The Course in Miracles mentions forgiveness, it is not defining forgiveness the way that the world defines forgiveness. The Course in Miracles is not asking you to overlook something you think somebody did to you. It's trying to get you to recognize that the way that you see things, the meanings that you're giving things, that's what's causing the pain that you're going through or the joy that you're going through. It comes from your perception. So, so it looks like, he says, God's design for the salvation of his son opposed by a decision stronger than God's will, that, that there's a part of us that wants to believe that we are bodies. And the Course says, his son is dust. That means that uh, we believe that we are bodies. The Course in Miracles defines bodies as dust because bodies disappear. Bodies do go back to the dust. So the Course in Miracles wants you to understand you are not something that rots and goes back to the dust that you are not your physical body. And so when you believe that you are just your physical body, then the Course in Miracles says that uh, you are believing that God is incomplete and you're believing that chaos sits up in triumph on God's throne. So let me give you some advice after 40 years of teaching and studying the Course. Listen very carefully. Would you like some advice that could make this whole journey easier for you? Okay, that's, let, me share, let me share with you how you can make the whole journey through the course easier for you. Don't focus in on the parts of the course that you don't understand. Focus in on the parts of the course that do hit you, that do strike you, that does resonate with you. If you will focus on the parts of the course that do make sense to you, then it will lead you to the understanding one day of the parts of the course that do not make sense to you. So I'll say it again. If you read something and it doesn't make any sense, keep going. If you read something in the course and it doesn't make any sense to you whatsoever, do not, I repeat, do not try to focus in on the part of the course in miracles that you do not understand. The Course in Miracles teaches that if you focus on what you don't understand, it just emphasizes your feelings of helplessness. If you focus on the parts of the course that you don't understand, it just makes you feel more hopeless and more helpless. Just, that's just a little tip. Keep on reading. Here's another tip after 40 years of working with people and teaching the course, because I do the course full time. That is what I do in the world. I have been teaching the course full time since 1987. And it has been my calling and what I do in the world since 1987. So you're not, you're not listening to somebody who's not familiar with the Course in Miracles, okay? You, you are listening to someone who, who has dedicated their life to being a voice for a Course in Miracles. And there's no way that you can study something with the devotion that I've studied it with, working with as many people as I've worked with for as many years as I've done it, that I could not be helpful to someone who's willing to be open and receptive to the idea that they do not know. Okay, so let's keep on going. It says, such is your planning for your own defense, and you believe that heaven quails before such mad attacks as these, you believing that your body that can get sick, that you can be a victim of things outside yourself. It looks like truth has turned into lies, and it looks like all the universe has been made slave to laws which your defenses would impose on it. What in the heck did that just say? Well, spirit keeps telling us that you are the creator of your experience, that you are not the victim of anything that you're going through, that you have an eternal nature, that you are totally innocent, that you are totally guiltless, 
that your real self is totally connected to love and totally connected to God. Your, the Course teaches that you have been forgiven every sin, crime, thing that you think you've done, that you are more than a body. This is what the truth is teaching. But it looks like, it can look like what you believe is truer than what the Course is saying. It looks like your defenses and your plans and your beliefs are truer than what the Course might be saying. So the Course says, we believe that God is made blind by our illusions, our false ideas. We believe that the truth that we've been studying is turning to lies. It's saying you are totally innocent. There may be a part of you that believes you're guilty. The truth says that you are totally abundant. And there may be a part of you that believes you don't have any abundance at all right now. The truth says you're never alone and you're always surrounded and connected to others in love. You might be experiencing a lot of loneliness and aloneness. So to you, that will seem like a bunch of crock. But then the next sentence is the sentence that is awesome. It says, yet who believes illusions but the one who made them up? Who else can see their illusions or their beliefs and react to their beliefs which is the illusion, as if they were the truth. So, of course, you believe in your beliefs because you're the one who made them up. Of course, you believe the way that you look at things right now because you're the one who made it up. So, whatever you believe is something you've made up. Whatever you're continuing to believe is something that you are making up for yourself to believe. Do you know that no matter what the world has taught you, no matter what your parents have taught you, no matter what the culture has taught you, you are still free right now in this moment to choose to believe something new and different. You don't have to continue to believe what you were taught by the world. You don't have to continue to believe what you were taught by society. You don't have to continue to believe what your ego is teaching you. But who believes illusions but the one who made them up? Who else can see them and react to them as if they were the truth other than the one who made them up. That's why if I say something to you and it's not what you believe, that's why you would re rebel against what I'm saying because you would want to believe what you believe, right? Whatever you believe, whatever you made up, whatever your beliefs are, that's what you want to believe. So if someone tells you something different from what you believe, then you're going to react to that in many cases in terms of what? Disbelief. Who else can see the illusions and react to the illusions as if they were the truth other than the one who made it up? So the Course in Miracles defines an illusion that fear is an illusion, right? So you could say, yet who believes fears but the one who made those fears up? Who else can see those fears and react to those fears as if they were the truth but the one who made them up? If I have a fear of snakes, then I believe that fear of snakes is real because I made the fear of snakes up. I could be around snakes who absolutely are no threat to me or no danger to me at all. But because I'm afraid of snakes, then I'm going to believe in that fear because I made that fear up. So whatever fears you have, whatever fears you have in the situation that you're in right now, do you know it might be hard for you to believe it, but you are making up that fear that you're having right now. You are making up that conflict that you're having right now. You are making up that sickness that you think you have right now. <clears throat> That's hard to believe. That's startling. I have some resistance to that. All those feelings might come up right now. But do you know just because you have a reaction of disbelief that doesn't necessarily believe that what you are being told is not the truth just because you don't believe it doesn't mean that what you're being told is not the truth. Just because you don't believe it doesn't make something not true. So what does the Course in Miracles tell us? Well, the Course in Miracles tells us, and like you say, uh, damn if they don't seem real. I know, because how else could you believe it unless it seemed real? It would have to seem real in order for you to believe it. That's why pain, the Course in Miracles says, pain and pleasure have the same purpose. The purpose of pain 
and the purpose of pleasure makes you believe that the body is real and that the body is what you are. If I hit my body and I feel pain, then it makes me think I must be this body because I'm feeling pain. If, I, if my face is stroked and that feels so good and I feel so much pleasure from that, that's still making me do what? It's making me identify with being my body. I feel all this pleasure in my body. And, ooh, I got a toothache. I feel all this pain in my body. So you're doggone right that it seems real. How else would we believe it if it didn't feel real? But then what does the Course in Miracles say? The Course in Miracles says, well, let me tell you. It says that the Course in Miracles says that God knows not of your plans to change God's will. So what is God's will according to the Course? Because I'm going to bring the whole, all the material into what I'm teaching. So the Course in Miracles says God's will for you is complete happiness. God's will for you is complete happiness. God wants you to have your creator, your creator, your creator, your creator wants you to have complete happiness. Your creator wants you to have complete happiness. Your creator wants you to have complete health. Your creator wants you to have complete health. Your creator wants you to have complete love. So the laws of God are the laws of love. The laws of God are the laws of health. The, God, the laws of God are the laws of healing. So no matter what you believe, the Course says God doesn't know about your plans to change God's will. The universe remains unheeding of the laws by which you thought to govern it. The, the, the universe is not paying any attention to our beliefs. Whether I'm in a good mood or a bad mood, gravity is going to continue to operate. Gravity does not go away because I'm in a mad, bad mood today. And gravity doesn't go away because I'm in a good mood today. Whatever is a universal law, whatever is a law, is going to be in effect no matter how you feel. So that means the universe remains unheeding of the laws by which you thought to govern it. It means that heaven is not bowed to hell. So that's the same as saying what? Love has not bowed to fear. Uh, health has not bowed to sickness, nor life to death. So what would be the main thing that you would need to remember as a student of A Course in Miracles? That The Course in Miracles is only talking about two things. The Course in Miracles uses many different words, a lot of different terminology for two basic things that it's teaching. It's teaching about love and fear. Everything about the Course is about undoing fear and allowing yourself to experience love. So everything in this book is talking about love or fear. Any form of happiness is love, and any form of uh, unhappiness is a form of fear. So sickness is a result, the Course says sickness is a result of fear and anger and guilt taken out on the body. So whenever I feel in my body, whenever I feel the body is in pain or the body is in sickness, then I remind myself that, okay, Purdy, you're feeling angry about something right now, you're feeling guilty about something right now. Because your sickness, your pain, your lack, your unhappiness, your upset is coming from some form of anger, guilt, and grievances that you have that you may not even realize you have, that you may not even realize you have, that you may not even realize you have. And you're projecting that anger and that guilt onto your body from your mind because the Course teaches that the mind the mind is what creates everything that happens on the physical. That everything that happens on the physical is being created by the mind. Everything that happens on the physical is being created by the mind. So if you have sickness, if you have pain, if you have suffering, if you have loneliness, no matter what you're going through, it's, it's a projection from your mind. Now, do you necessarily believe that? You probably don't. Because if you really did believe that everything that was happening to you, you were the one that's creating it, then you probably would not have the upset or the sickness or the lack or the loneliness that you're going through because you simply change your mind and then choose something different. If I knew that my 
mind was creating my uh, relationship situation was being created by my mind and I was in a relationship situation that I didn't like, then I would simply change my mind and start thinking in a way that would create loving relationships for me. If I thought I was experiencing lack, but I knew that the abundance would come from how loving and innocent and, and abundant I believed I was in my mind, then I would focus my attention on thoughts of love and abundance so that the love and abundance would manifest in my life. So, so of course, if we already believed all this, there wouldn't be any need for us to study. Okay, if you already believed that you were responsible for what you see and that you choose the feelings that you experience and that you decide on the goals you would achieve, if you really already knew that everything that seems to happen to you, you ask for and then receive as you have asked, then you would just start doing what? You would just start asking for something new. So you are not a victim. 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 You are not. I'm sorry. That's the truth. The Course in Miracles says uh, people make decisions to go through pain and then they forget that they made the decision to go through pain. And then it looks like the pain or loneliness or upset is happening to them. So it looks like it's happening to you because you don't realize that at some level you made the decision to go through this experience and then you forgot that you made the decision to go through this experience. So if it looks like you are desiring something and it looks like that thing isn't happening, it's because you don't truly desire for it to happen or it's not for your own best interest for it to happen. So, the, so God doesn't know about your plans to change God's will, which is that you have perfect happiness. The universe remains unheeding of the laws by which you thought to govern the universe. And heaven hasn't bowed to hell, nor life to death. Do you know you can but choose? You can choose what? You can but choose to think you die. You can choose to think you suffer sickness. You can choose to distort the truth in any way that you want. But what's created, the truth as God created it, is totally apart from the choices you make to die, the choices you make to suffer. The truth operates separate from your ego. The truth operates separate from what we may or may not believe. All right, take a breath, take a breath. Remember only this, you need not believe the ideas, you need not accept the ideas, you need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. This comes straight from A Course in Miracles. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. Others may seem to be quite startling. You are not asked to judge the ideas at all. Their use, their use will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. So, just like you chose to forget that you also forgot that you chose to be separate from God. You also forgot that you chose to forget God. <laughs> you chose to forget God. The Course in Miracles says, you wanted to know what it felt like to be separate. You wanted to know what it felt like to be separate. So in order to do that, you have to forget oneness. Right? So if I'm going to forget that I am you, then I've got to, if I'm going to have a separate experience from you, then I've got to forget that I am you. And you have to forget you are me so that it looks like you can have an experience of separation. So the Course in Miracles says that defenses are plans. So whenever you have a defense, it's really a plan. And the plan is to defeat what can't be attacked. Uh, really, you really can't attack God. You really can't attack love. You really can't attack anything that's real. Anything that's real cannot be weakened. 
Anything that's real cannot be hurt. Anything that's real cannot be harmed. Anything that's real cannot be attacked. If you have a real relationship, nobody can destroy it. If you have a real relationship, nobody can come between you and that person. Whatever is real cannot be destroyed. Whatever is real cannot be destroyed. Whatever is not real can be destroyed. Whatever is not real can be destroyed. God is real. Truth is real. You could, you could use an example. You could say at this level, gravity is real. So no matter what you feel about gravity, you can't change it, right? So no matter what you think about God, you can't change God. God is love. God is love. God is love. God is love. You are love. You are love. You are love. You are innocent. You are innocent. You are innocent. You're the creator of your experience. You're the creator of your experience. And there's nothing you can do to change that. Now, you can not believe you're the creator of your experience. You can get upset because someone tells you you're the creator of your experience. But guess what? Regardless of your reaction, it still doesn't change anything. You are creator. You are creator. You're not a victim of your relationships. You're not a victim of your financial situation. You're not a victim of your health. You're not a victim of your body. You're not a victim of your job. You're not a victim of anything that is happening in your life because you are creator. You are a creator. A creator who's forgotten that they are a creator. A creator who now thinks that they are a body, a man, or a woman, or however you identify. As long as your concept of yourself is centered around being a separate body, then you are not aware of how the truth operates. Okay? You're innocent. You're going to be loved. You're going to be guided. You're going to be supported. And you're going to be helped and you're going to be unconditionally loved no matter what you believe, no matter what you do, no matter what you believe about your past, no matter what you believe about anything or anybody else, you are not going to change the laws of love. And the laws of love give you unconditional help, unconditional support and unconditional love. God's love is, is nothing like our love. God's love is nothing like human love. Human love, in my perception, is a pathetic love. It's a love that's based on conditions. It's a love that's based on scripts. It's a love that's based on trying to get everybody to do exactly what I want them to do, how I want them to do it, in order for me to be happy. <laughs> you know, and that's not love. That's specialness. So I'm going to say to you again that there's nothing you can do to change eternal love. And you are totally sinless. You are totally innocent. So it says, what is wholly sinless cannot sin. You are not sinful. You are not sinful. The Course in Miracles says you make mistakes based out of ignorance. That we make mistakes out of ignorance and fear. We try to hurt each other out of ignorance and fear. We try to do things that are harmful out of ignorance and fear. Not because we are inherently bad or inherently sinful, or inherently guilty. That is not the truth about us. We are innocent beings, Just don't, and don't worry about how did it happen? How did this all come about? How did this happen? Well, I'll tell you how the fire got started after we get you out of the burning building, okay? We, we, can, we can get in touch with how did this all get started after we get out of the burning building. You can find out how the fire started when we get you out of the burning building. Right now, we're trying to get you out of the burning building. So, it doesn't, so it's not so important that you understand how the fire got started. What you need to understand is how to get out of the burning building. And the way you get out of the burning building is to tell yourself that this sickness, this unhappiness that I'm going through is a decision that I've made. Okay, because I felt threatened by the truth. And so I'm trying to convince myself I'm just this body. But that doesn't make any difference ultimately because God knows who and what I really am. My inner guide, the Holy Spirit, knows that I am spirit. And my Holy Spirit is going to guide me out of this illusion that I'm in. And by illusion, I mean that spirit is going to guide me out of the false ideas that I have about myself that's causing me pain. You understand? You, you, you have false ideas and those false ideas are cause, causing you pain. So when the Course in Miracles says something is an illusion, 
it's saying that it's a false idea. You're believing something that's a false idea. You're believing something that's not true. That's what it means when it says you are dealing with an illusion. Okay, so the Course says, such is the simple truth. And by the way, you are totally sinless. You make mistakes. You make mistakes. You make mistakes. But mistakes, the Course in Miracles says, mistakes are for correction. Okay, if you went off and lost your temper, if you even got violent one time in your life, or, or you did something that you're feeling a lot of shame about, that was a mistake. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. It doesn't mean that you're inherently bad. It doesn't mean that you're guilty and sinful and going to hell. There is no hell. Or I put it this way. If you're in a world full of uh, fear and conflict and guilt and grievances and separation, if you're in a world where it looks like anything could happen to you or anybody that you love, that's hell. So if you want to believe in hell, then you're already in hell and you're trying to get out of hell. <laughs> you know, this is hell. You know, read the paper sometimes or just be aware of some of the stuff that goes on. The Course of Miracles says, you're already in hell. What are you talking about going to hell? You're in hell. You're in a place that you're afraid of each other. You're in a place that you think you can catch some kind of disease. You're in a place where you think you could walk down the street and somebody mug you. You're in a place that you think you could be driving down the street and somebody could run a red light and kill you. You're already in hell. <laughs> you don't have to. You're in a place where you could love, you think you could love somebody with all your heart and then they somehow abuse you in some way. That's hell, right? Broken in two by periods where you go to a beach. A broken in two by periods in which you go to the movie. A broken in two by period in which you go uh, to a play. The Course in Miracles says, this is hell. Fear is hell. Being in a place of fear is hell. And sickness is nothing but anger and guilt taken out on the body. So how do you begin to get rid of the sickness then? The way you begin to get rid of the sickness is forgiveness. But what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is seeing the sickness correctly. So what's the correct way to look at sickness? Look at sickness as a call for health. Sickness is a call for healing. Sickness is a call for healing. So when you're feeling sick, you are calling for healing. You are calling for health. And you're supposed to say that. I feel right now I can tell by the way my body feels and the pain that the body is going through that I'm calling for health right now. I'm calling for healing right now. You know what I'm saying? They told me that I have this serious condition going on in my body. That's me calling for health right now. That's me calling for healing right now. So the Course says, well, such is the simple truth. It says in paragraph uh, 10, such is your planning for your own. No, 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 no. Such is the simple truth. It's paragraph 12 on page 259 in the Course in Miracles workbook, the lesson, Sickness is a Defense Against the Truth. Uh, do you know that you're not going to get this by just listening to this one time? Do you know that you're not going to remember this? In all likelihood, you're not going to remember what I've said unless you continue to let yourself hear it over and over and over again. Because do you know that you believe what you believe right now because it was repeated over and over and over and over and over and over and over? If you think you're going to accept the truth without giving it attention and study and repetition, you are fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself if you think you're going to master the miracles and the frame of reference that the Course in Miracles is teaching, but you never pick up the book and you're never going to study it and you're never going to do the workbook lessons. You are innocent. You're absolutely innocent. And I'm not attacking you or judging you or condemning you. I'm just saying you'll never have a cake that you never put the ingredients together and then put it in the oven. It just won't happen. So to think that you are going to undo a lifetime worth of programming without you personally being proactive and helping to change your mind by following the happiness recipe called the Course in Miracles, but yet you think you're going to get all the happiness and the peace and the miracles that it's promising without you actually giving it your attention. Uh, I personally haven't seen that in the 40 years that I've been working with people. The people that get the results are the people who actually are motivated to actually go, I'm going to do this material. I'm going to do the workbook. I'm going to read the text. I'm going to join with other people that's into this, and I'm going to focus on this new way of thinking. And I'm going to apply it, and I'm going to apply it regardless of my resistance. I'm going to apply it even if I don't accept it. I'm going to apply this even if I don't welcome it. I'm going to do what the recipe says. 
Now that's the person that gets the healing. That's the person that gets the miracle. That's the person that gets the holy loving relationships that they're looking for. It's never the people in my perception, in my experience, that just sit around and talk about it and analyze it that gets the results. So this is the simple truth. This last paragraph I'm going to cover before I complete. He says, such is the simple truth. The truth doesn't make appeal to might. The truth doesn't make appeal to triumph. And guess what? The truth does not command obedience. Did you hear what that, you see what that's saying? The truth does not command obedience is the same as saying God does not command obedience. God and truth and the course and love are all the same thing. They're all synonymous. So God doesn't command obedience. Truth doesn't command obedience. Truth doesn't seek to prove how pitiful and futile your attempts to plan defenses that would alter the truth. The truth just wants to give you happiness. The truth just wants to give you happiness. The truth is not going to command that you obey. The truth is not going to try to prove how pitiful and futile your attempts at happiness are. So God is never going to command that you obey. It's not going to threaten you in any way. Uh, but So what does truth do? What does God do? Well, he said God merely wants to give you happiness. Truth merely wants to give you happiness because that's the purpose of truth. That's the purpose of love. That's the purpose of health. That's the purpose of God is to give you happiness. He says perhaps the truth sighs a little. Perhaps God sighs a little when you throw away God's gifts. What do you mean throw away God's gifts? Well, right now in this lesson, you are being told exactly how to have a healing in any area of your life that you're suffering in. You're being told it comes from remembering that you are not a victim of it and it comes from recognizing that your sickness or unhappiness is a decision that you've made and that you need to make a new decision which is to look at it a brand new way. So it says perhaps truth sighs a little when you throw away its gifts and yet it knows with perfect certainty what? That what God wills for you must be received. What? What God wills for you must be received. What God wills for you must be received. What God wills for you must be received. So what does God will for you? Well, God wills that you have happiness and health. God wills that you have love. So it's going to happen. Sooner or later, you're going to have the happiness and the peace and the healing and the joy that you want. It's going to happen because it's God's will that it happens. And nothing happens. Everything happens that God wants to happen. Everything happens that our Creator wants to happen. You need to be clear about that. God's will for you is that you have joy and peace and happiness and healing and health. And that's going to happen. That's going to happen. You don't have any choice about that. It's going to happen. Now, do you have some beliefs? Do you have some illusions that say, no, that can't happen? Well, if you believe that it can't happen, then it will look like it's not happening. But it looks like it's not happening because you believe that it's not happening. But that doesn't stop it from happening. So spirit is going to continue to help you, heal you, guide you, direct you. As long as you exist, that still small voice, your spiritual guidance is going to be trying to reach you. Now, you can continue to believe what the world has taught you. You can continue to see yourself as a victim. You can continue to believe that you are wanting things, but it's not really happening. It's not happening because you really don't want it, but you don't know that. You don't realize that a part of you don't wholly desire that relationship, or wholly desire that job, or wholly desire that spiritual awareness. Because there's a part of you that's been taught that you're a body, and that you're separate, and that you don't deserve to be happy completely yet so the truth is like it says perhaps truth sighs a little when you throw away its gifts and yet it knows with perfect certainty that what god wills for you that health and that happiness and that joy that god wills for you must be received so you got to listen to this over and over and over again and the next time you're getting ready to say what I'm going through right now is being caused by something outside of myself. 
And then I try to try to change everything and everybody outside of myself. If I'm going to be happy, then you are telling yourself a lie. And you are going to keep yourself going through the thing that you're going through. But you have help. You have help. You have help. You have help. You are not alone. You have the Holy Spirit. That's your inner guide. That's your teacher from God. You are not alone. You are not alone. You can't do this by yourself. Stop believing that you're going to do this by yourself. You're not going to do this by yourself. It's not going to be your wisdom that's going to get you out of the situation that you're in right now. It's going to be the wisdom of your higher self, your greater self, your God self, spirit that's going to get you out of the situation that's causing you pain right now, the suffering that you're going through. It's a call for love. So I'm going to do one more thing at the end. So hang in there a minute. Um, I'm a full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles. I do it on a donation basis. Uh, if you'd like to make a donation to my teaching ministry, um, then you can use Venmo, the Cash App, PayPal, Zelle, or you can go to my website, www.earlperdy.com. That's P-U-R-D-Y. Um, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions, Clarity Sessions. Go to my website, www.earlperdy.com, and you can get more details about my personal sessions, and you can self-book a session with me online, and then we'll talk, okay? We'll talk, because there's another way to look at and there's a solution and an answer to whatever you're t going through from A Course in Miracles and Truth perspective. All right, I'm also uh, an astrologer and a numerologist. Everything that you learn to do, spirit can use that to wake people up and to help people. And if you're open to that kind of insight, then I could be helpful for you that way also. I'm here to be truly helpful. Sun is at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. On the Earl Purdy page, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. To make that donation, all you need is my email address. That's earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. That's my email address, earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. And if you want to be on my contact list for any workshops or classes that I'm doing that are, that are going to be more personal and more advanced, then make sure you send me an email so I can put you on the list. Okay? All right. Also, I want you to know that if you're in Denver, Colorado, you can attend my class on, in person on Sunday. Thursdays are online, but Sunday is online and in person. So if you want to come to one of my classes on Sunday at 1555 Race Street, R-A-C-E, here in Denver, Colorado, 1555 Race Street, Denver, Colorado, 80206, you're welcome that's 1 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time every Sunday on the Earl Purdy page also on Facebook. And then Thursdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. We do this presentation that's called Hardcore Course in Miracles. I upload all of my classes to YouTube. So I have hundreds, literally hundreds of classes on the Course in Miracles and other topics on YouTube that you can watch. And also on Facebook, I'm here to, to be helpful. That's what I'm on the planet for. I give my body to the Holy Spirit to share this truth. So I'm here for you. And whatever you're going through, there's another way to look at it. There's another way to look at it. So, But at least four times you want to watch or listen to any class. And please share these videos. Please share these videos. Please share these videos. Please share these videos. Did, please share these videos. Please share these videos. Please share these videos. All right, here we go. Give me a minute. I'm going to give you a prayer. I'm going to say this prayer for two minutes. Let yourself hear it. Let yourself hear it. I'm going to keep going through this lesson until we finish the whole lesson. Listen, there's a prayer. There's a prayer that you need to learn. There's a prayer you need to learn. It's on page 259. 
the prayer goes like this on page 259. Sickness is a defense against the truth. I will accept the truth of what I am and let my mind be wholly healed today. Let my mind be wholly healed today. Sickness is a defense against the truth. Sickness is a defense against... You are supposed to learn this. These prayers are very, very important. If you want to get the healing and the blessing that you want, you have to learn these prayers that the Course in Miracles is telling you to use. And they need to be your first reaction to whenever you're going through any kind of pain or suffering in any kind of way. Say, sickness is a defense against the truth. I will accept the truth of what I am and let my mind be wholly healed today. Sickness is a defense against the truth. I will accept the truth of what I am and let my mind be wholly healed today. Sickness is a defense against the truth. I will accept the truth of what I am and let my mind be wholly healed today. Sickness is a defense against the truth. I will accept the truth of what I am and let my mind be wholly healed today. Now you see I'm remembering that. My eyes are closed, right? I'm remembering it. I'm remembering it. I'm doing what I'm being told. It told me, the Course in Miracles says, say this. Say this if you want a healing. Say this consistently. So I'll say it for you. Sickness is a defense against the truth. You will accept the truth of what you are and let your mind be wholly healed today. Let your mind be wholly healed today. Sickness is a defense against the truth. Anger is a defense against the truth. Depression is a defense against the truth. Poverty is a defense against the truth. Loneliness is a defense against the truth. Attack is a defense against the truth. Limitation is a defense against the truth. Bondage is a defense against the truth. The ego is a defense against the truth. That's sickness. Sickness is a defense against the truth. You will accept the truth of what you are and you are innocent and you are sinless and you are guiltless and you are loved and you are an eternal spirit and you are awareness and you are consciousness. You are part of all that is. You are more than a friggin' body. You more than a little human being out here trying to make it every day, wondering how you're going to pay your bills, hoping you can find somebody to be in a relationship with for a little while. You are more than that. You are more than that. Sickness is a decision. Unhappiness is a decision. But that means you are not trapped. That means that you are not alone. Mighty companion, this is Earl Raj Purdy. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here live. Thank you for watching the replay. We need each other. We cannot do this alone. We're in a world that doesn't tell us the truth at all. So we need to make sure we join together. We join together and join on the truth together. So when you finish watching and listening to this, try to catch yourself before you go back into your old regular world and mind and start seeing yourself as a separate body, seeing yourself as a victim of whatever you're going through. You are welcome. Thank you, all of you. I always look at all the comments. You are a blessing. Mighty companions, may the course be with you. I appreciate you so much.